friends, this is Lauren Taylor, and I'm excited to be here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel to use some easy lights on a light up skeleton death before decaf coffee card. Here's a look at the products I'm going to be using today. I have my easy lights, the Pear Blossom Press stamp and die bundle, and I'm going to be using them with some Miss Ink stamps products, the death before decaf stamp, stamp set, modern typeset frame die, and the bone chevron stencil. I also have some colorful card stocks that I'm going to start with, but I will also bring in some dark brown later on. I'm going to start with creating my stenciled background as that is going to need the most time to dry and I'm using the frame from the Modern Typeset Frame Die again from Miss Ink Stamps and I will be ink blending and using some glitter glaze on this cream colored cardstock. So I have my Waffle Flowers grip mat centered on my desk and I placed my cream cardstock and my stencil onto the grip mat. And I'm using Vintage Photo Distress Ink with a blender brush. And I'm just adding a light cover of that color through the stencil. And when I'm happy with how it looks, I did a little kind of stencil sneak there. I'm bringing out my Fallen Snow Glitter Glaze from Brutus Monroe. And I'm going to apply that through the stencil as well. Now you can't really save this glitter glaze because it's picking up the ink through the stencil, but that's okay. I use it sparingly anyway, so probably not a bad idea to be using more of it. And I'm going to go ahead and use my reverse grip tweezers to pull this off and set it aside to dry. I love these bones in this like chevron pattern and the glitter just gives it a really fun shiny detail. So I'll go ahead and clean up my desk and I'm going to move on to some more die cutting. So now I want the frame part of the modern typeset frame die and I cut it out of this kind of shimmery brassy gold colored cardstock. This is from the Your Paper Insider subscription box number three from the spring 2023 as well as this kind of golden but also kind of brassy vellum and I'm trimming this to be four and a quarter by five and a half as this will be the background and I will attach that to my card base and you can see the frame sits nicely. You'll see that vellum pop out around the edges. I have a top folding A2 card base. I'm just using a bone folder to really reinforce that score. And I want to attach my vellum to the card base, but I didn't want you to see adhesive. So what I'm going to do is just grab a sheet of double-sided adhesive. This particular one is from scrapbook.com. And again, I'm going to trim it to be A2 in size, but I will go a teeny bit smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. And that's just so I don't have to get my adhesive lined up like perfectly perfectly behind my vellum. It gives me a tiny bit of wiggle room and it's close enough to the edge that there won't be any issues when I glue down this vellum to my card base. I'm using a little pokey tool to help me get off one side of the release paper just trying to get it started and I'm going to lay my vellum pretty side down and add the adhesive sheet to the back side again trying to line up those corners and the edge and then giving a, it a good press making sure that it is nice and adhered to the back of my vellum. I'm grabbing my pokey tool to get off the other side of the release paper but I'm only going to peel it back about an inch. I don't want my uh, sticky side to get stuck to anything until I'm ready for it to. So I have just that one inch to get started with and I'm lining it up to the scored side of my card base. And that's just in case my vellum is too big or too small or off-centered. It gives me a chance to trim off the excess of the white card base, but honestly, I do a pretty good job. I just peel back that release paper slowly and press down the vellum until I completely cover the front of the card. So now I'm going to work on coloring my favorite part of this card and that is using my skeleton with the mug of coffee from the Death Before Decaf Clear Stamp Set from Miss Ink Stamps. I'm going to use my Misty so that way I can stamp it multiple times. I do it twice um, 
stamping it twice in the same spot, you know, the benefit of using a misty. And that's just so I get a nice color, um, a really good impression of the stamp using my ink. I'm going to be using alcohol markers. So I grabbed my Lawn Fawn Crunchy Leaf Dye Ink Pad. And I, again, I stamp it twice. And that way I have a clean, nice stamped image for coloring. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just so you can see my coloring a little bit better. I'm using Ohuhu Art Alcohol Markers. These are Honolulu markers and I'm going to color in all of the shadow of my skeleton with the warm gray one, so WG01. I don't really have any rhyme or reason to how I'm coloring. I'm just looking at the stamp and adding the darker of the two colors where I think the shadow would be on the image. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to bring in the WG 0.5, another warm gray color, and completely color in the rest of the image. So I'll do that for the rest of my skeleton. I did not color the eye sockets and that's because I'm going to cut them out. So let's move on to the coffee. I started with Y13 and I'm filling it in with E430. And then I'm going to use the same color three times as E160 to color in my mug. It just was the best color that I thought that matched with that vellum. So I lay down one you know, round of color just where I think the darkest areas of my mug would be. I come back a little bit after it's dried a tiny bit and add in more color. After it's dried a tiny bit, I added another layer of color. So that's how you can get some shadow using the same alcohol marker color. I, I don't have a die set for this stamp set, so I'm doing some fussy cutting and I even cut out around the rib cage and the arm. Now you definitely don't have to do that, but I'm gonna show you what I do when I need to cut on the inside of an image. I'm grabbing my 1 8 of an inch hole punch and I just hole punch the eyes. And I'm sorry, my camera is having a hard time focusing here. Um, I noticed as I was editing, my camera was just going back and forth, back and forth. So I do apologize for that. But I'm just using the hole punch to start my cut inside of the eye socket and then using my little trimming scissors that I like to use for fussy cutting. These are from Spellbinders. And I am cutting out the rest of the inside of the socket. So just following along the inside line of my stamped uh, image. And I'm definitely taking my time, making sure I don't cut too fast. And so that way I don't cut into my image and then I'll be sad. So just take your time with this process, but I definitely think this is worth it in the end. I'm going to use that same vellum to cover the back side of my skeleton's eyes. It's definitely giving an ET vibe right now. So I'm just lining up my vellum to the back side of my skeleton and using my pencil to trace where I need to cut. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive to glue this on the back side. Um, I'm going around the circle or the circle, the eyes like glasses, and then I'm using my finger just to kind of tap up some of the adhesive. That way I, in case I got a little too much, it doesn't seep out through the eye openings. I'm grabbing my Easy Light now and my battery. This is a one of my regular Easy Lights. I am a huge fan of Pear Blossom Press products, so I definitely have quite a few of these in my, in my stash. So super excited to be on the design team. So I am using up more of my interactive elements. But now it's time to figure out where those LEDs and where my push button needs to be on the battery pack of the Easy Light. So I'm starting with adding where I think my LEDs are going to go, but this step kind of was not necessary since I remembered pretty soon after this that I have a stenciled background that needs to go in place and that's where my LEDs need to be um, kind of figured out there. So let's move on to adding this frame to my card base. I'm just using some liquid adhesive so I have some wiggle room time to make sure my frame is centered onto my card base. So I'll go ahead and add that again centering it. 
I love the vellum peeking out around the four sides around this glitter frame and then also the design of the frame has these little squares around the inside and I think that just adds a little bit more of a subtle element for this very monochrome coffee card. So now I am going to just place my stenciled background where it will go inside of that frame and I'm drawing those eye marks again and I'm going to grab that same um, hole punch again one eighth in size and just going to go ahead and hole punch where I drew those little pencil marks where the eyes will be on my skeleton. So I'm going to just draw and trace here so I know where those LEDs will go. Now this is great if you're going to attach your LEDs to the card base, but I'm actually going to attach them to the back side of my stenciled background. So there's two ways you can do this and I'm going to show you how I did it for this particular card. So I have where my eyes are going to go or my LEDs I should say behind the eyes. Now I need to add where my sentiment press here is going to go. I, I thought it would fit really nicely on the coffee mug. Um, I like the little tiny scripty press here font of one of the sentiments or the interactive sentiments from the stamp set. So I'm gonna grab my pencil again. I'm gonna flip my card around. It's just gonna be a little easier to make sure I move my paper and my skeleton out of the way. And I'm hovering my pencil over where I know my push button needs to go and then adding the mark to the inside where nobody's going to see this later on. I'm getting some double-sided adhesive. This particular one is a quarter inch wide and I'm adding two strips of that to the back side of my battery pack. I'll go ahead and peel off the release paper and then using that little pencil mark that I indicated where I needed the button to go, I'm gonna line up my battery pack, making sure the button is where that pencil mark is. Now I only have two eyes on my skeleton, so I'm actually gonna trim off one of the LEDs by just cutting off the wires. Definitely need to make sure you are clearly understanding which wires you're cutting. You wanna cut the red and blue wire that connect to the same LED. So just make sure if you're gonna trim off an LED, that you're not just cutting any wires. You wanna make sure that they are both connected to the LED that you are removing. Now for the other two that are still attached to my battery pack, I'm working the LEDs to make sure they are facing outwards and through the hole openings from the back side of my stenciled panel. I didn't get my LED quite centered, it's a little low, so I'm using some scotch tape to keep them in place, so I have a little bit of time here to make sure that my LEDs are placed exactly how I want them, and the tape will just keep them in place as I assemble the rest of the card. Um, after that, I am liking the placement, so let me do a quick little close-up here so you can see how my insides are going so far. I have my battery pack in place and my LEDs in place where I want them. Um, I do have a little bit of excess wire here, so I'm just going to use another piece of scotch tape to hold those wires in place on the inside of the card. I want to make sure I'm not you know, bending or pulling on anything um, once my card is assembled so those wires stay in good shape on the inside of my card. I'm grabbing the world's best foam tape and it truly is the world's best foam tape. The, uh, the backing just comes off so easily and it's repositionable in case I end up not lining up what my, you know, my panel very straight. I end up doing a pretty darn good job. I'm impressed with myself later on, but I just love how easy this tape is. It's a great thickness. So there's a plenty of room for your battery pack and anything else, you know, interactive that you want to make. Um, I did trim a piece in half just based on the room that I had on my battery pack and the left side of my card. And I will go ahead and create a little frame around my insides. And then I will also add a little piece of foam to help with keeping the wires in place um, behind my panel. And that's mostly just because I had this extra piece of foam tape from trimming it down to fit on all four sides behind my panel. 
So before I glue it down, I'm making sure everything seems like it's in a good place. And here's one more close up so you can see the layout with my foam adhesive. I'll go ahead and peel off the release paper. And as you can see, it just comes off so easily. I love it. And once I have all of my release paper released from the back of the foam tape, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna stand up because I need to stand up when I'm centering things and place my panel so it lines up with the center of my frame. Giving it a nice good press and I don't need to peel it off so I won't show you how great it is for repositioning in this video, but don't you worry, I'll probably show you in a future one. And now I'm going to stamp on my press here sentiment before I glue down anything. I'm known to do that as well, so I'm glad I got that stamped on my coffee mug before I glue my skeleton to the card base. I'm using liquid glue just to cover, again, the back side of my skeleton, making sure to not add any glue where my eyes are and that vellum. And I'll go ahead and line up my skeleton, making sure that the eyes are lined up and the press here is lined up with my push button. And it looks so good. I'm so happy with how this card is coming out. But I wanted to add a sentiment and especially bring in a little bit more of that dark brown of the coffee and my press here uh, sentiment. So again, from the Death Before Decaf Clear Stamps from Miss Ink Stamps. And I'm also going to grab the largest banner die from Popsicle Sticks Mini Slimline Stitched Layer Dies. And I'm going to use this to create my sentiment. So I have some dark brown cardstock. I wanted to pick a cardstock that looked like coffee. <laughs> and I'm going to stamp my sentiment with embossing ink and emboss it with white embossing powder. I'm going to grab my Misty again so I can stamp more than once to make sure I have a nice clean impression. But before I do that, I will grab my Cottontail Embossing Powder Tool from the Rabbit Hole Designs and I'll go ahead and add some powder to that cardstock. I had a little too much there so I just blew it off and uh, go ahead and reset it for the next time I'm going to use my embossing powder tool. I'm putting my sentiment on the center of this brown piece of cardstock because I'm going to end up die cutting around it. So I figured stamping it in the middle was the best. And again, I stamped it twice to make sure I had all of that sentiment stamped down and it was nice and clean. And I'll go ahead and use some tweezers to hold my cardstock while I add that white embossing powder. This is a super fine embossing powder from Ink on 3 in the color Arctic White. And then use my heat gun to melt that embossing powder down. I'm going to go ahead and let it cool. And while I do that, I'll get my little mini die cut machine and my banner ready to die cut. So I'm looking at how it will be when it's centered onto my card base to give me an idea of where I want my banner to cut. Now this banner is obviously much longer or wider than my sentiment. So I'm going to start with cutting one side of my sentiment. So I'll run that through my little die cut machine and you can see I have one edge of my banner and then I'll just slide the die over again. So sorry, this part's a little out of focus, but I'm going to slide it down so that my sentiment is centered between the, you know, the ends of my banner. And I will just run that through just to cut the little tail of my banner. And then I will bring it right back out because I don't want to risk my die moving and just messing up my sentiment. It did have a little bit of kind of, I call them paper wispies, <laughs> those little excess paper when you die cut. So just trim those off. And now I can add this to my card. I already have lots of dimension thanks to my world's best foam tape. So I'm just gonna use some liquid adhesive to glue this sentiment just below my skeleton. Again, doing my best to get that banner as centered as possible. And that will finish off my light up skeleton card. I hope you enjoyed this process and that you have some fun, uh, you know, recreating this card on your own. I absolutely love how easy it is to change my easy lights from a three LED to a two LED. And I just think it's so cool to see my skeleton's eyes light up. But thank you so much for joining me today on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. Here are some more videos for you to check out. 
and I will have everything I use linked down below in the description, starting with everything you can find on the Pear Blossom Press shop. Thanks for watching. Bye.